Looking for the ultimate Apple Watch Series 6 surf setup? Here's everything you need to know. Hi guys, Chris from Stoker Travel here, or welcome back to the channel. Now before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out any video goodness. Now over the last two years, I've turned my Apple Watch into the absolute ultimate surf watch. I've been tracking all my surf sessions around the world. Um, I've recently upgraded to the Apple Watch Series 6, um, so I'm going to be running through my updated Apple surf watch guide. This is uh, going to include everything you need to track your surf sessions, so your surf length, distance and speed, as well as getting things like the tide report and the surf report right here on your watch face, so you've got everything you need right there on your watch. Uh, this guide Although it's set up for the Apple Watch Series 6, it does also work with Apple Watch Series 2 upwards. Uh, that includes also the new Apple Watch Series 6 and also the Apple Watch SE 2. So yeah, we're going to run through everything you need to know, bands, cellular, GPS, all the complications you need to set up, the apps you need to download, and everything you need to turn this into the ultimate surf watch. So yeah, let's get started. So first things first guys, I'm just going to run through a few frequently asked questions that have popped up on my blog post and my other video for the Apple Surfwatch guide. Uh, these are just to kind of get a few things out of the way so you feel safe in the water and you can make the most of your Apple Watch in the surf. So first off, is the Apple Watch waterproof? Well, yes it is. I've been using my Series 3 for two years now. I've recently upgraded to the Apple Watch Series 6, but Series 2 and upwards are waterproof, and this does include the new Apple Watch Series 6 and also the Apple Watch SE. So yeah, waterproof and good to go. Next up is, do I need the Apple Watch Cellular Edition to be able to use it to track my surfing? Well, the good answer here is no. The Apple Watch can track your surfing using just the GPS only model. I've actually not used the cellular model at all. I'm using GPS only, tracks it absolutely perfectly. So yeah, no need to splash out on the more expensive cellular version to be able to track your surf on your watch. And the next most common question I get asked is which strap should you use for your Apple Watch for surfing? Well, I started off using the original sports band. Uh, that worked perfectly fine. I really liked the silicone feel of it and it meant it dried instantly. However, I did come across quite a few people whose watch bands had popped open while they're surfing and the Apple Watches are now sat at the bottom of the ocean, which is something you definitely want to avoid. Uh, after finding that out, a few of my friends have recommended the Apple Watch Sports Loop, which I then changed over to. Worked really well, that Velcro attachment was really secure, um, and that extra bit on the end of the loop meant it wasn't going to fall off. However, because it was fabric, I did find it stayed wet for quite a while after surfing, and then when you're washing your watch off afterwards as well, even longer. Um, so it wasn't ideal, but it was a good fix. Um, a couple other bands I've tested out are the Nomad straps. Their rugged strap is really good. Again, really nice silicone feel, and it's got the standard kind of watch clasp on it, which was great for surfing with, nice and secure. Uh, the UAG Under Armour Gear watch straps, they're also another solid option. Again, those are Velcro and a bit more fabricy, so they do stay a bit wet. Um, but the one I've upgraded to now is the new Apple Watch Solo Loop. This combines everything I loved about the sports loop with the original silicon sports band as well. Super comfy, super stretchy, really secure. That single band really does the job. And for me, that's the ultimate surf watch strap for the Apple Watch. Now, if you watch my other surf watch guide, you will remember that I used two apps to get everything set up on my Apple Watch for surfing. Uh, that was Dawn Patrol, and then also another app called Surface, which was later renamed Surfwatch. Uh, now with the Apple Watch Series 6, I've set everything up. I'm having massive issues with Surfwatch, uh, but luckily with Dawn Patrol 3.0 version, uh, which has just been released, you can get now consolidate everything into one single app and you can now get your tidal data, your surf report, and your surf tracking all via Dawn Patrol. Uh, the caveat is to that is you do need to be part of the Soul Surfer subscription. Now this is just 14 US dollars per year, or you can pay monthly. Uh, so it's well worth it to get everything in one nice streamlined interface, get everything working on your watch perfectly. So yeah, this guide, I'm gonna use Dawn Patrol only, and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to set up all your complications, track everything, and more. So yeah, let's go for the run through. So guys, first things first, we're gonna to wanna to set Dawn Patrol up on your phone. And to do that, we obviously need to download it and get it right here on your iPhone. So first things first, 
head over to the App Store, go to the search bar, and nice and simple, type in Dawn Patrol, and it should be your first hit as a download uh, selection. Once you've got that, obviously mine's already installed, so I can just click open. That's gonna take you through to the app. As you can see from my screen, I've got a few of my sessions on there, but we're gonna come back to that later on. So you wanna hit bottom right, so that comes into your profile. As you can see, I'm all set up as a soul surfer, so I've got access to everything. And the top right, you wanna hit that gear button, and then go to forecasting. Now, if you head down here, you can see I'm set up for Byron Main Beach, which is my closest beach at the moment. But you can cl click on there and search for surf spots, and this is gonna give you the title and the surf report data you do want. So I'm just gonna set it up for the pass, so just to change it over. As you can see, it's set over to the pass, and you're pretty much all good to go. Now, Dawn Patrol made things super simple from now on. Um, so instead of having to go in and set up all your complications, uh, you can now simply hit add watch face. Uh, if you do that, that's gonna install that watch face straight onto your Apple Watch if it's all paired and you're good to go. So as you can see, they've got two different options here. Um, they've got one which is more modular and then also the infograph one as well. Personally, I really like the modular version. It just gives a nice cleaner inf in, uh, interface, I think. So I'm gonna hit add watch face. So that's gonna pop up with a prompt in your Apple Watch app. Click add to my faces. Boom, you're installed, infograph module, and it's all good there straight on your Apple Watch. Now you can obviously go in and customize this a bit further. Uh, you can change the kind of color layouts, um, so you can give it like a really nice like blue tint, uh, which is something I like doing, or you can just stick with the standard multicolored Dawn Patrol uh, app, which has got those really nice blue and orange tones in it. So yeah, once you're all set up, everything's all done on your watch and you're good to go in terms of having your forecast there. So you've got your tidal data in the center. Top left, you've got the water temperature. And then along the bottom, you've got the wind. So that's the current wind and direction, the one in three hours and the one in six hours. So during the day, you can check and be like, sweet, the wind's a bit crap now. Don't want to go for a paddle, but hang on. It's going offshore in a couple hours. So I'm going to get ready to go for a paddle. Now alongside that in the center, you've obviously got the tidal data. So you've got your highs and lows and also the, uh, the next high tide and the next low tide are also displayed there as well as that graph. Now underneath that, you've also got the swell size direction and of course swell period too soon. Uh, so today you can see it's 3.5 feet at 12 seconds. Um, so that's pretty good for a surf at the pass or Clarks where I'm gonna head straight off. I've wrapped up this video. Uh, now, if you're heading into the infograph kind of option as well, you've got all those options as well with a few extra bits of information around the side. Depends if you like that layout or not. Now, the other thing you can do, um, I've got the links to all of these watch faces down below so you can click and install them straight away if you don't wanna go through Dawn Patrol, you just wanna get everything sorted. Uh, but the other thing you can do is you can use the Apple Watch complications to use those Dawn Patrol complications and information in your own watch face layout as well. So you can fully customize it. Um, I've done this one with the Meridian uh, layout. Uh, it just gives a nice clean interface. I didn't want all the information that the Dawn Patrol one had. Um, so I wanted to add in the London time zone. So I always know what time zone my parents are on. Um, but then I still also wanted the tide times. I wanted the wind direction for now. And of course that swell report too. Um, I have also left a link in the description below to that one. So you can download that and install that straight away. So that's my surf watch uh, face uh, and also in my full written guide to dawn patrol they've got all the watch faces that i've put together and feel free to install it customize it yourself uh, change the colors or anything like that so yeah super simple to get dawn patrol set up on your apple watch now and get everything ready for surfing Now, one of the main reasons you wanna get Dawn Patrol and your Apple Watch set up as a surf watch is so you can track your surf sessions, which is one of the most unique features about using the Apple Watch to go surfing. Uh, now, if you've got the Dawn Patrol app all set up on your phone, it's really simple when you go for a surf. So you've got your watch band on, it's all nice and secure. You're ready to go for a paddle. Hit any of the surf complications on that watch face. So even the tidal one, hit it there and you'll have a nice screen that pops up that simply says, start surfing. Hit that again. Boom, you're into surf tracking mode. Paddle out and enjoy your session. Now, throughout your surf session, you're gonna have the stats of your last wave. So that's gonna do the length of the wave, your top speed, and also the total distance on the wave. Uh, that'll disappear about, after about 30 seconds. You can adjust that in the app before you go surfing. Uh, but then for the rest of the session, you're gonna have your total wave count there, your distance surfed, 
and of course the next tide as well so whether that's high or, or low it will say whether it's falling or um, rising and of course the time alongside things as well then once you finish your session you're out on dry land all you've got to do is spin that crown on the apple watch you'll hear the beeps as it unlocks underwater mode nice little beep and then you can flick through and just simply hit stop to record all your surf then on the screen if you've got all your health data synced up with it it'll give your minimum heart rate maximum heart rate your average beats per minute your time in the water it give you full activity levels if you're trying to close those rings uh, your total calories burned and then the overview of your surf session itself so again waves total distance surfed total wave time stood up for as well and you can also change the board that you've used for that session as well then once you've wrapped up your session hit done and you're all good to go and as soon as you come back into contact with your phone again, boom, everything's synced over and we're now going to go through all the stats you've got access to. So when it comes to analyzing your surf sessions during, uh, using the Dawn Patrol app, you've got a few different features available on your phone once all your data has synced over. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to boot up that Dawn Patrol app when everything's synced. Uh, as you can see from my screen, I've got a few sessions on there already logged from all around Australia. So I'm going to go into this one from the past just to break through a few of the bits of data because it's got a couple of really good waves that help utilize the data on your iPhone. So as you can see from here, I've got eight waves, total distance surfed of 659 meters, two minutes and four seconds standing at right time. I did an hour and 11 minutes in the water. Now, as you can see, all my waves there are nicely plotted out using a GPS graph. So it's great to see where you're sitting in the lineup. If you're surfing on reefs, you can get your positioning right. So that's really nice. And one of the great things you can do is you can go in and analyze individual waves as well. So as you can see, I got one really long wave that was way better than the rest of the one. If I click on that one, it's wave seven. It's going to give me the full stats. So I've got top speed on there of 15.4 miles an hour, uh, 261 meter long ride, which is pretty epic. 48 seconds of ride time, which is pretty sick. I've got quite a few nice turns on this at the pass. It's a really nice longboard right hand sandy bottom point break here in Australia and one of my favorite waves for sure. And if I swipe up, I get even more in-depth stats through that Soul Surfer subscription. So again, you can see the full rundown of where my speed was generated. And as you plot that, it'll show you where on the wave that was generated too. Again, you can then coincide that with like turns, different parts of the wave, the reef, the point, wherever you're surfing. So it's a great way to compare all your waves as well. Um, then if I head back into the original one with my full overview, if you click this stack button here, um, the one with the cross, if you click on that, that gives all your failed surf attempts. Uh, as you can see from here, I had quite a few missed waves as I was just sitting in the wrong position. It was quite busy, so I've had to pull off the wave. Um, I don't tend to dig in that too much. It's a little bit depressing sometimes. Uh, but it's, again, it's another good way to show, you know, I'm missing a lot of waves over here, but I'm kind of catching a lot of waves over on this bit to help with your positioning if you are surfing the same spot again and again. So yeah, that's a run through of the main things you can get from Dawn Patrol when it comes to tracking your surf. So yeah, let's talk through the rest of the app as well now. To wrap up the review of Dawn Patrol guys, we're just going to head back into our iPhone. I'm going to talk you through the rest of the app so you can see the other settings you've got access to and the other information you can have a look at from your own personal surf sessions. So if we head over to the app itself and um, we boot it up, and uh, you see I've got a whole heap of surf sessions logged here from all around the world. Um, so this includes my time in Australia, such as Lennox Head, Byron Bay, uh, into Sri Lanka for my trip at the beginning of the year. Got the Bristol Wave Pool. Hit the link in the description below for my full video vlog from there. That was pretty sick. And of course, the Solomon Islands as well. Again, sick place to head. Really enjoyed my surf sessions there. Again, link in the description below to my full video guide from there. And when it comes to your personal records, head to that rosette in the top right hand and it'll load all your best ways from tracking as well as your overall stats. So as you can see from my uh, info here, I've ridden 1,275 waves since I've been tracking them. Uh, there's a total length of 93.3 kilometers, which is pretty awesome. And a total stand-up wave time of four hours, 29 minutes. So I sh probably should be making a little bit more progress than I actually am, but hey, it's all fun and games. Uh, my fastest wave, still the same as my last uh, video update on the Apple Surfwatch, that's 26.8 eight miles an hour at Coffee Bay, a uh, sick wave in South Africa. The longest wave was 352 meters. That was Medui in Indonesia. Epic left-hand point break. My best wave time was actually at Wanagos last week on a really nice fall. 
51 seconds of ride time. It was a sick wave all the way from the middle reef right into the beach. So yeah, that was pretty sick. And so that's all your records and totals. Uh, if you hit the surfboard in the bottom, you've got access to all the boards you're riding. So as you can see, I've got my 7.0 Midway, which I've had a few sessions on, 5.10 Little Marley. So check out the link in the description, my full review of that Mick Fanning softboard as well. And a few other boards I've got there, including my Seaside, my Chumley, Taylor and of course the Puddle Jumper HP. Again, there's links to the reviews of those board in the description below as well. Um, you can check out your most surfboard, which ones you've got the most sessions on, so you can track which board you're getting the most waves on as well, which is pretty cool. Hit the GPS marker, you've got access to all of the wave spots that you've logged in there. You can rename the spots if they're not uh, already on there, and you get all the codes and things for them as well. Gives you the amount of sessions you've tracked there, so somewhere like Old Man's in Changu, 32 sessions, Playgrounds in Lebong, 11 sessions, Coffee Bay, 11 sessions, and so on, so on. Uh, if you do head back into your profile as well, you can edit all those things, rename yourself as well. And if you go back into that uh, settings in the top right, you of course go into surf tracking and forecasting and update your spot if you do move around. So at the moment I'm at the pass, uh, I can change that over to Byron Main Beach, some other spots up and down the coast, maybe Lennox, maybe I'm going down to Spot X in southern New South Wales, up the coast to Noosa. You can change those around and that will automatically update on your Apple Watch as well. Uh, and then when it comes to other settings, you can obviously show the swell height in meters or feet, uh, your wind speed in knots, kilometers an hour or miles an hour, and also the water levels in meter or feet. And of course the water temperature, which again, you can get straight on your Apple Watch as a complication in either Celsius or Fahrenheit. So yeah guys, that's the Dawn Patrol app. There's a whole heap of info in there. You get a whole heap of data. That Soul Surf subscription is definitely worth the $14 uh, per year. Uh, you do also do a 30 day trial, so test it out, dig into it, see if you're gonna use it. But it's just a couple of dollars a month to get all that access and easily set up everything on your Apple Surf Watch. So yeah, Dawn Patrol, the one app you need, absolutely epic and well worth downloading. Two other quick things I wanna add in there about the Dawn Patrol app and its compatibility to the rest of your iPhone and other things as well, is yes, it does integrate with the Apple Health Kit, so all your activity can be tracked and synced, as well as your heart rate and things like that. So yeah, if you are tracking all your health data, you can sync up all your surf sessions with that as well. And the other awesome thing that the Dawn Patrol app is also compatible with is the Surfline replays uh, feature as well. So if you're a premium subscriber to Surfline, the forecasting website, you can also hook it up, hook up your sessions to one of their webcams from thousands of beaches all over the world and actually watch back your waves as well. Obviously at some waves this does work slightly better than others uh, but there's plenty of spots in England, Australia and America that are really well covered. And you can actually watch your waves in real time and also track all that data with your watch too. So yeah, health kit and Surfline replays, two other awesome additions to the Dawn Patrol app. And there you have it guys, that's my full guide to turning the Apple Watch into the ultimate surf watch. Now if you do have any more questions about complications, watch bands or setting up your Apple surf watch, uh, add them in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond. And of course there's a full load of links in the description below uh, to my full written guide, my full review of Dawn Patrol and a few other helpful hints and tips for getting your Apple watch all set up. So that's it for this week guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you next week. Phew!